Before we begin today's video, just a quick reminder that you still have time to take part in the Hari Kemerdekaan giveaway special. You stand a chance to win a signed copy of the Garden of Evening Mist by Tan Tuan Ng. The contest closes on September 15, 2020. Click on the card on the screen or you can just check out the link in the description box below. Good luck! And now, back to your regular programming. Hi guys, it's June here and wherever you are around the world, I hope you are staying safe and feeling fabulous. And happy September everybody! I cannot imagine we are already into the final quarter of 2020. I'm going to bring you up to speed on what's been happening with me, what's going on here in the Singapore lit scene and I also have a little bit of unboxing to do. So let's get rolling! For me, uh, in the month of August was the launch of my second book, co-written with my writing buddy Eva Wong Nava, with beautiful illustration um, by Devasmita Dasgupta. Now, this book currently is available for order with a 10% discount if you use the code WSTS when you order from the World Scientific um, website that is the publisher of the book and this code is valid till September 30th. I'll put all the details in the description box below. I just want to thank you guys for supporting me and uh, thank you for being there at the launch as well. It's so wonderful to see all my friends there and to see a lot of familiar names and I really appreciate all of you guys who have also placed the order for the book. Um, thank you so much. This project means really so much to me and being able to launch it on Malaysia's National Day was extra special. A couple of weeks ago, I was invited to a food tasting at the Hugs Epigram coffee bookstore. Now, are you one of those people like me, right? We love looking at cookbooks. Sometimes we may even purchase them just to look at them. But for some reason, we don't get around to cooking any of the dishes there. <laughs> maybe because we are super duper busy or maybe we are just not brave enough to attempt. But in any case, if you are in Singapore, this problem is solved because now you can pre-order a set meal that's based entirely on one of Singapore's best-selling cookbooks, Wet Market to Table from the Hux Epigram Coffee Bookshop Online Delivery Service. So guys, do not worry. You can now order this set meal so you can relax, you can focus on continuing to read your books. Now, um, in this particular set, okay, it consists of the a Mexican corn and uh, I hope I get this right, chayote salad. Okay, this is the starter and followed by fish with rosemary and bolotti beans, which is yummy, and a snake gourd lemon olive oil cake for dessert. From the name of the dishes, right, you can tell that this is, it's got a little bit of a Latino flavor in it, but it also has a touch of um, Asian feel to it as well, okay? It is really yummy. The, the salad, uh, sorry, the starter, which is the salad, was like so refreshing and really crunchy. I, um, guys, I am not a food writer, so I really can't find the words to describe apart from the fact that it is really yummy. It has such a lovely tangy taste. It's so refreshing. Um, I highly recommend it. It's not something that I've tasted before. Let's just put it that way, okay? And for the fish and rose, a uh, fish with rosemary and bolotti beans, the um, the it's made with white fish and it's got this lovely creamy sauce. Oh, it's really good. I think that is actually one recipe I, that I might just try it myself, okay? Like I'm gonna to try to make it at home one of these days. I'll, I'll show you what happens and when I get around to making it. And finally, something that is totally unexpected is the snake gourd lemon olive oil um, cake. Now, snake gourd is something that I do enjoy eating, especially when I order my Nasi Kandar. I love my steak gourd like deep fried, super crispy. But I would not have thought like you could use snake gourd in a cake. But guys, let me tell you something. 
it works okay it works the cake was yummy and um, you get just a, a hint of that snake gourd uh, flavor in there so guys if you do want to try out this particular set meal um, you can order it now if you're in Singapore and they will deliver it to you so you can you know focus on your reading and wait for the food to come to your house I will put the details in the description box below so you guys know how and where to order the book by the way the recipe the recipes are from this particular book wet market to table this book is um, by a chef and author now okay Pamelia Chia and I think she is somebody who is a, a great um, advocate for uh, local cuisine for the preservation and the celebration of Singapore uh, Singaporean cuisine so definitely guys I highly recommend that you give this a try and if you are feeling adventurous, go ahead and get a copy of this book. You can order it online and then prepare the dish at home. I do not think it's that difficult. I have had a look at the recipe. It is actually doable, even for me. And if I can do it, guys, trust me, anybody can. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of unboxing right now. Um, these are books that have uh, come in through the mail. So I've got two, I've got quite a few actually, but I'll start with this few. Um, this is uh, a package that is from uh, Booktique. You guys know that I order my singlet books very often from Anthony of Booktique. And uh, you know, it's just been, it has been sitting around for so long, I've forgotten what I ordered, but I'm sure it's something awesome. Um, I've already done one round of singlet and um, I was very fortunate I won another voucher uh, so th that's why I have a second um, unboxing here because with that voucher I could find more books so here they are uh, first one okay the space between the raindrops okay check it out this is by Justin Kerr Okay, this is a flat, sorry, this is flash fiction at its best. So I can't wait to start reading it. Contemplative and filled with possibility. Each evanes okay, evanescent story in this collection inhabits the fleeting, unrepeatable place between the falling droplets on our island of rain. Hmm, interesting. Okay, I can't wait to uh, dive into this one. There's so many books. Guys, you know my TBR list. It's getting out of hand, I tell you. Out of hand. Uh, second one here, The Wayang at Eight Milestone by Gregory Nelpon. Okay, it's a bit glossy, so I may have to do some inserts later on so you get a good look at this, um, the cover. Okay, this long overdue collection gathers together 16 of Gregory Nelpon's short stories, 11 of his essays, and a selection of his sketches of life in coffee shops, hawker stalls, and samsu shops. Wow, that word samsu, it's moonshine. I've not heard that word in a long, long time. My grandfather's shop, we dealt with liquor, so I know these stuff. I know these things, okay. Um, through his writing, Nelpon poignantly records a lost, rich world, the colourful, exciting and sometimes perilous Singapore of half a century ago. Okay, so these are stories of Singapore's past. Very interesting, I'm sure. That's why I ordered it. Okay, and then this is, ah, this is by Felix Chung. This book is called Vanishing, Vanishing Point. Um, 3,000 people go missing every year in Singapore. That's a lot of people for a small island, okay? Why do they go missing? What do they leave behind? In his first collection of short stories, award-winning poet Felix Chong explores disappearance, both physical and psychological, weaving the lyrical cadences of his poetry with an intriguing study of characters. He peels a psyche open and offers a glimpse of our frailty. Ooh. I like it. I think that's why I ordered it. Something a little bit dark, right? Guys, you know me. I'm always looking for something dark to read, you know? Not into happy endings. It's just not for me. Oh, look! I also got this very cute... I guess it's like a... a big... a... pencil case? Oh. Okay. 
Look, it's very cute. It says here, the marbles. We rise up to the challenge. It's very cute. There you go. You can use this put, put, I guess I can use it to put my iPad. And so that brings me to this baby here. Look at it. Look at that. I got this from the Raffles Hotel Boutique. Now, if you guys are not familiar, um, in Singapore, the most famous hotel here, or one of the most famous, of course, now we also have Marina Bay Sands, that's with its infinity pool, that's very famous as well. What before that, okay, uh, the Raffles Hotel, okay, it is the hotel where all the mega stars will stay at when they're in Singapore. So today I went to the launch of Raffles Readers, A Century of Adventures. Look at that. Uh, it's really, it's got a very, very cute cover. It is illustrated by Mark Young. Um, you know, I'm very excited because it kind of reminds me of, um, what was that? Um, this, the book by Ludwig Bemelman, um, Hotel Splendid. I, I, I love that book so much. And I believe that was the book that inspired Anthony Bourdain to write his books as well. Um, so I got this today. I'm very excited to read it because I think it's got a lot of tales from the past as well. Okay, so you thought you knew what went on inside the Raffles Hotel, but have you read these tales? recently unearthed from the archives. Very nice cover, can't wait to read it, very excited. Okay, so that's it. That is all the unboxing I will do today. I have more stuff to unbox, but I thought I'll, but I thought I'll save it for, okay, this is what happens when you live in the city, right? Honking, did you hear that? Okay, if you didn't, fine. But I do want to just, you know, bring you up to speed on what's been happening, guys. So apart from the launch of the second book, um, there, I have also been on um, a collaborations with uh, my dear friend Hema. Okay, um, I did like two videos with her already, two uh, on her event page or on her Facebook page. Okay, so we did something like a Facebook Live. Um, her page is called Hammer's, Hammer's Book Therapy. I will put that uh, in the description box below. So do check it out. I talk about Singlet in the first one. Uh, and then in the second one, a few other guests and I uh, talked about uh, Malaysia. What, what were the books that made us feel super Malaysian? And it was all in conjunction with Malaysia's National Day, which was on August 31st. Um, you can check that out as well. I have been reading quite a fair bit. I've fallen off the wagon for a while. But you know, guys, next year, I'm not doing any more book challenges. My gosh, it is... Well, the, the positive side is, uh, is that like I feel I'm venturing into many other genres and, you know, discovering a lot of new authors. Uh, but the problem is trying to find books to fulfill all the conditions and all the requirements kind of left me neglecting all the books that I already have. And that's not good because um, those books have been on sitting on my shelf for ages. Like I really, next year I will kind of be like, I'm going to kind of be putting myself on a, maybe I better not say a full book buying ban because I don't think I can do that. I'll be on a semi book buying ban. Uh, so that I can finish what I have already acquired over the years, I would say. Uh, yeah, and definitely, oh gosh, I don't think I can do any more book challenges, especially the Pop Sugar Challenge. Uh, it has been a lot of fun, and to be honest, it was not as difficult as I thought to find books to fulfill all the um, criteria. And uh, I'll probably, again, I'll do another video um, to update you guys on which which are the books that I've read to fulfill the, all the criteria listed, okay? So yeah, that should be coming out a little later on. I am close to finishing, I'm quite happy to say. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm not too strict with myself um, with that challenge. Like if a book does fulfill two or three of uh, the criteria, I would just consider it as having covered um, because otherwise, oh, I wouldn't have time for anything else, including new stuff that comes my way for review. Now, apart from that, uh, I have 
I F, okay, now I'm sounding like my Italian teacher, then that's what I want to update you guys on. Uh, I have taken Italian lessons uh, some time ago, a long time ago in fact, um, but I have stopped, now I'm back again. I decided to uh, be a little bit more focused this time. So I have a uh, an Italian tutor. She comes twice a week to my place to uh, uh, to conduct lessons and uh, I, I'm i quite excited about it. My aim is to be able to probably take um, a B, B1, okay, B1 or B2 by uh, the end of next year. Let's see how that goes. Now for those of you who have taken like any of the European languages like Spanish or um, Spanish, French and all that, okay? The CEFR, okay, here, it is the Common European Framework of Reference for Languages. So what the CEFR does is that it sets up all the, uh, like, levels for you to, um, to follow so you know how far you're progressing in your language acquisition. So for example, the first level is A1, next level is A2. There are a total of six levels. Um, so that's A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, and C2. So if you have acquired C2, you are kind of like, you have basically mastered the language. Okay, so where I am right now, I think I'm probably around A1. Okay, I'm very ambitious, I know, but I hope to be able to get to B2 um, by end of next year. So guys, are you guys um, learning any languages at the moment? Do share with me what your experience uh, have been. Uh, I will do that as well. I think I might do a little video about my learning journey and what other things that I do to sort of help me along because I mean, I'm a person who I do enjoy learning languages mainly because I feel like the more languages you know, the more you can read, right? Especially like um, books that are written in a foreign language that you um, you are able to understand. I think that makes it a little bit more special. That's just me, guys. I mean, I mean people have different interests and different uh, skills that they want to acquire. That's something that I'm interested in. And if you are, do share with me what your experience has been like. Um, and uh, if you're not interested in learning languages, well, that's fine as well. You know, do whatever makes you happy as long as you don't harm anyone and you are not committing a crime. Okay, guys, that's it for this episode. It is a quick one just to bring you guys up to speed on what's been happening. And uh, hopefully also, um, I am aiming to finish the Pop Sugar Challenge by November. Okay, so that leaves the entire month of December for me to catch up on anything that I might have missed out. But so far, so good, guys. And of course, you know, I have a different strategy for fulfilling each of those criteria as well. Like I said, um, I am not too hard and strict with the kind of books that I select as long as, it, as long as they fulfill the criterion that has been set. So that's it for now. Thank you so much guys for watching. As always, until I see you again, remember to be kind and be brave, noble. Oh, and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, okay? I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Thank you.